So um, now we're going to get into the Z trace. Um, the Z trace, this is primarily a driver trace. And uh, Jake, uh, can you explain the Z trace, please? Sure, it kind of goes back to, um, and, and what I want to point out again, if you're new to pressure mapping or um, uh, going to get started down this road, is a common question that I get when I talk to coaches around the world is do the best players show a uniform trace pattern throughout their bag? And the answer is no. And, and, and I, I always say they should probably be playing with about four of them. But to be honest, that would only be off a flat surface. I mean, it, once we start doing environmental changes, there, there's more traces than that. So they have to show a way to interact with the ground based on the club that they have, based on the surface that they're lifting off of, and based on the shot that they <coughs> want to hit. Um, so uh, Mark Wilson's a great uh, example of this. He actually z traced through driver. Mark's a five-time PGA Tour winner, a guy that I've worked with for a few years. And as, you, as some of you know, one of the shortest hitters on the PGA Tour. Uh, I always joke with Mark that he knows how to play golf better than anyone. And then he laughs and says, yeah, right. And I go, no, seriously, you know how to play golf better than anyone. You literally have to play perfect to have time wins. <laughs> so um, uh, anyways, uh, he, had, he was dead linear in his irons. And uh, that's the, the trace back and the trace through that you saw with Boo Weekly. And obviously, M Mark has made a lot of his money uh, with his uh, scoring clubs, his irons, um, so on and so forth. But he had a Z trace in his driver, and his instant reaction to that was, well, that's not very good, is it? Or that's not very efficient, is it? He goes, so should we change that? And I said, not unless you'd like to hit it shorter, okay? Um, the Z trace, the, the key benefits there, so again, even a, a, a gentleman who has had a great deal of success, who maybe doesn't hit it as far, how he's interacting with the ground really is, almost squeezing every bit of uh, club head speed that he can muster. Um, the key points of the Z trace is obviously everybody sees the Z shape in it. Um, again, I'm gonna highlight this. It is the, it is uh, pressure moving to the trail side immediately, to the lead side, and then back through impact, back to the trail, will eventually finish on lead side. The key point is how quickly this is happening. You don't have much time in a golf swing to ramp this up. Uh, and we will get to a key position that Sasha always highlights on the downswing. We will get there, but it basically it is uh, lead arm parallel on the downswing. You have about a tenth of a second, which is not a lot of time, to ramp up about 1.5 units of your body mass in that time, and there's a direct correlation to club head speed. Uh, I will point out that the ball is on a tee, and everybody that has any kind of background with 3D launch understands the need to have a, uh, I shouldn't say the need, uh, we, the cat's out of the bag now. I know no one here is training their juniors to hit down on the driver, though some champion store guys that I, I uh, coach were taught to hit down on their drivers a whole lot, so we haven't changed that. We, but start, I, we started with a short tee, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. The drivers were about that big. Right. So we didn't have much choice. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, and that was the information at the time. So again, changing someone that's been playing for 40, 50 years that way, probably not. But n no one that's coaching high-level juniors anymore is teaching a negative attack angle through impact no. with the driver, which is why you're seeing this. So the cat's out of the bag about the handle moving up and left and the effects that has on distance, high launch, low spin, all of that stuff. So this is why you're going to see the trace. The key point, though, is, and I'll bring it back to this, uh, is getting pressure into lead side sooner rather than later. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of drills out there that I, I think can be very uh, advantageous. The freezer drill at the top, Great for organizing the, the center and mass of the club and, and the, the pitch of the shaft and the face angle. All that's a fantastic. But from a ground force reaction standpoint, if you keep them in that drill for the rest of their life, you might limit their potential. Because the problem with pausing at the top of the swing is the average amount of vertical pressure is on the trail side at the top, which I already told you should be anywhere from here to here. So what I would prefer if I want to teach my juniors, and again, this is all an old adage, right? We'll teach you to hit as far as you can, we'll straighten it out later. What I would prefer in a ground force uh, standpoint on the body track is getting the pressure sooner rather than later and in a driver if they back up, uh, so be it. I mean, we've got more jumpers than everything and, uh, than we've ever had, and, then, and it's how they're being trained. And something Sasha told me down at the PGA show I thought was kind of interesting. Um, obviously, we all know, and we'll get into Justin Thomas's trace later in a slide. Everybody knows how he's airborne. You could fit a golf magazine under his lead side. 
Something Sasha uh, communicated to me was it was interesting is that you could have just as much vertical force. So Justin Thomas and Rory McIlroy could have just as much, and Rory's not off the ground. It all comes in the shallow or the lowering here. Rory lowers more, pushes up, doesn't have to leave the ground, and yet can have the same amount of vertical force as Justin Thomas, who lowers less, but is off the ground. So it's kind of interesting. The thing that drives me crazy about this race over the years is that um, well, how I met Ryuji Yamato was he wanted me to teach him of this trace. And Ryuji is not a big man. He's, um, he's only about 150 pounds, very thin, and, and not too tall. And I said, you know, I don't think you want to learn this trace because you're going to hurt yourself. He said, I don't care. I, I need 20 more yards to play the, uh, you know, the regular tour before I get ready for the champions tour. Anyways, uh, we worked on it. But this is a completely misunderstood trace to the notion. This is really a heel-to-toe trace where the pressure goes directly trail heel but 100% of the pressure gets to the lead toe very early. And all they're doing by backing up is creating dynamic loft on the club. So, uh, so Jake and I were in Boston with Tom Kavecchia doing a presentation, I think, four years ago. And I was a little nervous, which is kind of rare for me. I get, you always got to be a little nervous doing a presentation, but I was really nervous because we had all the track man guys were there, all the Titleist guys were there, and I knew them. Uh, uh, all the guys we were doing deals with, they were all there. And so I just blurted out like I often do. I said, I don't know why guys just don't grab a shorter club and put more off on it. Because my background is that of a golf club manufacturer and shaft manufacturer. That's what I did for them. And after the, after the, uh, the presentation, the two, all the tightest guys came back and they said, you know, the trend that year on tour, I think this was three years ago, was to go to a slightly shorter club and increase, uh, increase the loft. Because you won't have to use this back up, uh, backing up method to, uh, to generate the same dynamic loft. Yeah, and I, well, so I here's the also, and I just I'm sorry, I just want to interrupt. Just because the trace went in a Z pattern doesn't mean you backed up, right? So Kyle Berkshire, who just won the, the world long drive, he has what we call the blackout, right? He's on the mat, he does this huge pressure shift, and because he's offsetting so much centrifugal force moving that way, he's pushing this way, and his whole body comes up off the ground. Look, it goes away. So if you put 100% of your pressure on this toe, and then because you offset and you move, where did my pressure go? My weight still, my, my center mass is still going forward, but my pressure went back. That little transition move there. Sorry, I didn't mean yeah, that. No, so, so just because your pressure shifted back very quickly doesn't mean you backed up. A good player is still gonna have their center of mass moving forward. Okay, and that's the hard part. That's why you have to separate center of mass and center of pressure. Just because my center of pressure zipped back because I had so much force and the net of that vector offsetting lifted this foot off the ground does not mean that I went this way with my center of mass. Two completely different things. So the, uh, this is gonna lead, we're just gonna review the traces and then we're gonna talk about, you know, what does this all mean? But uh, I, I'm interested in the long drive stuff. Uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. I, I don't think you can play tour golf today unless you can hit a 300 plus if you're a guy and at least 265, 270 for a lady. And so, learning how, and plus to be honest with you, it's absolutely fun to hit the driver long. I don't care how bad you play it, but if I hit four good drives on a golf course, I'm pretty happy, you know what I mean? Like I, if I drove that uh, 200, uh, 300 yard par four, you know, well, I had a good day. Right, so. Mickelson had a great tweet yeah. about hitting bombs. Right? Yeah. A lot of people probably saw that, but one of the things that he said in there was, I feel good if I'm hitting it long. <clears throat> when I'm hitting it long, I play better. I, I don't do Twitter too much, but Phil Mickelson recently said on a tweet, uh, I can't quote it verbatim, but he said, you know, there's something about just hitting it long that makes me feel stronger, makes me feel better about myself. So, uh, now, uh, this gets into the training aspect, but just to give you a little quick anecdotal part of it, that Z trace is indicative of a small person. It's not a big person trace. Uh, we're going to show you lots of examples of long hitters that don't back up, don't do not do not do this Z trace. It's because they're weak on the lead side. If you really want to train for golf, and if there's any trainers here, feel free to take me on because I, I like this type of debate. Uh, if you want to play golf well, strong, you're going to be. It's an asymmetrical sport. You're going to need to be stronger on your lead side. We've trained golf to be symmetric. It's not. Golf at the highest level is an asymmetrical sport, and I work with elite trainers, guys at the Olympic level. And, it, and I'm going to show you, uh, my favorite is Troy, is Troy, uh, uh, Troy Mullins. You can see in her trace, it's a little small there. Uh, she can bomb at 340, 350 regularly. She does not have a, a Z trace. 
This was provided uh, by Dr. Phil Cheatham and uh, Dr. Peter McKay. They were down in LA, but uh, this year. So, yeah. So why well, I think two months ago. Is that because she's stronger in her left side? Absolutely. Everything, everything. Her thighs are really big. Yeah, she just works off. She, yeah, she's, she's an just, athlete she's, who came from a different sport, yeah. right? So, so for her, you know, she, um, and, and and funny enough, if you watch her play in a pro am, she played in a pro am with Tiger, and, and she hit it inside of him on a par three. Um, you know, she's got a really nice iron game because her game is not so much trying to get that dynamic lock. And, and the really key thing to remember is that the driver trace is different than the iron trace. I mean, I don't think anybody here teaches the drivers the, 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 the long game the same way as they do the, the mid-iron game or the short-iron game. So, you know, let's just dispel that. Uh, that